let's, let's talk about housing. What the hell is going on? So you remember I spoke about the food market 10 minutes ago, and I said that if mm -hmm. you went to the U.S. 50 years ago, and then you went back to 2022 Israel and looked at the food market, you wouldn't see a lot of a distinction between the two systems. So the real estate market is right about there. The real estate market, although nominally private in Israel, is extremely, extremely heavily regulated, completely central, centrally planned and controlled by the government. Most of the land in Israel is owned by the state. The regulations, like as I, how much is it? Well, it's 93% overall 30, the country, 30. but in Gush Dan, for example, the percentage is much lower. Maybe more than 50%, but it's much lower. The real problem in the center of Israel is regulations and the municipal taxes. Regulations, I mean, in Israel, it's almost impossible to buy a house without bribing someone, you know, during the process. It's, it's just almost impossible. There's... Uh, Did you build a house? No, 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 no. I we never one. bribe anyone. <laughs> of course, never break the law. The law is sacred. But what I'm trying to say is that there's a strata of, of the citizenry in Israel called Macher. Macher, which is an old Yiddish word, basically means a mediator, wheeler and dealer, or something like that. And you always have machers when you try to do anything in the real estate market in Israel, people that mediate between you and the people that give you permits. And what these machers are usually are basically just people that make the connection and transfer the bribes for you. So the market is heavily regulated, centrally planned, extremely corrupt. And the outcome is that there just aren't enough apartments in Israel. The population is uh, grows. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you skipped a lot, okay? You're saying you're throwing all these accusations, right? That they're, that they're I'm, I'm not saying they're wrong, right? But now explain, maybe give an example, how, why their corruption, why are so many people all, where are the regulations, and if we were to remove this, you know, it would take less time to build and it would save less money. If we were to like, what, what, what can we do to literally cut the price of, like, I like to see the cut price of housing drop by a half. Literally, I think it should be half, 80% probably drop. Do you like what, what can be specific? Because you're speaking okay. in you're 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 speaking in like generic economic terms and Ge people that isn't relatable Ge to them, and they're I'm not speaking, involved I'm in building. I'm speaking generalities, but what I'm saying is not certainly it's not something I invented, but it's not even something that is like you know everyone knows. It's actually documented and almost proven. Because you have institutions that make comparison in terms of the regulatory burden between different countries. And the, and the regulations in Israel when it comes to the real estate market are by far the worst in the Western world. Within the developed country, we're probably the worst country when it comes to regulations in the real estate market. Now, why do what does it actually mean? It means that to get a work permit, it takes years, right? To get a permit to start building a house, it takes years. It goes through the municipality and it goes through certain committees and needs to be approved I, by I, I, And then they wanted me to make a change. And then I had to go back to my architect and then she had to make those changes. And then they're saying maybe put another sewer in case there's too much rain. And then and, I, and it's just like... And the list of requests is whimsical. Any changes. And sometimes it contradicts each other, the, the requirements. And for example, just a year ago, there was a new requirement that anytime you want to build a new house, you need a special engineering company to inspect the quality of the soil itself to make sure it is stable or secure or safe or whatever. You know, for 70 something years, Israel made do without that new regulation, but now apparently we need it. We need it. And why do we need it? Because the ability to inspect the quality of the soil that engineering capability is one that's being possessed by only a very limited number of big companies. And those big companies lobbied with the politicians and warned them that without inspecting the quality of the soil, houses are going to crumble in Israel, people are going to die, and the politicians are going to be blamed for not instituting this new regulation. This is how things work in Israel. In the real estate market in particular, but in many other markets. So my point is that because permits are extremely hard to come by and it takes a lot of time and everything is very time consuming and complicated and expensive and the land is being marketed or sold to 
to real estate developers very slowly. Everything comes down to not enough apartments and flats and buildings and houses being built in Israel, which is why you have an excess demand for housing, which is why prices are going higher. That's all, that's the entire story. And because this is the entire story, the solution to this entire story is basically going to all of those root causes I cited and simply solving them. So the what? state needs to- I wanna jump in, because I wanna disagree with you. I think, look, I bought a plot of land and I built on it. I freaking know they use headaches, hands on, all right? From the time I purchased to the time I, I drilled into the core of the earth was like 18 months. No, not even, it's insane, right? The thing that ideally should be done in 60 days for a private home, probably, if I, if I move fast enough. But what we have is, however, my, the cost of land, before I went to the regulations, before I went to build, before I went to my architect, before I went to the municipality, before anything was exorbitant. So I feel like the cost of housing is a lot more packed in the land than the building. What do you think? So to an extent, you're right. Of course, land in places like that is, is expensive. Especially now. But that's not yeah. the issue. I mean, right. that's not the issue in Israel. The issue in Israel, or the main issue, is that Tel Aviv, let's take Tel Aviv for an example. It's the best example, I think, to demonstrate my point. Actually, Gush Dan, let's take Gush Dan. Gush Dan, to those who don't know, is basically Tel Aviv and the cities that surround it. The metropolitan center of Israel. The metropolitan center of Israel is 25% larger than the entire city of New York. So New York, Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, whatever, is 25% smaller in terms of land area than Gush Dan. However, in the state, of, in, the, in, the, in New York City, you have about nine or 9.5 million people, a million residents. And in the Gush Dan, uh, about the four, right? So in theory, you can take the entire population of Israel, put them in Gush Dan, which is smaller than the New York City, and have them live there in, you know, the standard of living of New York, which is higher than, than that of Israel. And in the rest of Israel, you can have summer houses, winter houses, parks, whatever you want to do. So the problem in Israel is that in Gush Dan, which is where everyone wants to live because this is the center of Israel, the commercial and cultural city center of Israel, you simply don't have enough apartments or the density is just very low which is exactly the opposite of what people say about Israel. They say that Israel is very dense, we have a large population, the country is small, so obviously the price of real estate is high. And that's just not true. New York, as I said, is a lot more dense than, than Tel Aviv and Gush Dan. Same goes for Barcelona, Paris, and other big cities. In, in Europe, I think cities are more dense because they're more crowded. In Manhattan, they're more dense, so you have more people living on the same area of land because you have uh, skyscrapers. But whatever, the problem is not about the Schana. The problem is, is Gush Dan, Tel Aviv. And just to give you, before I let you ask a question, there was an interview in the newspaper with some real real estate developer, a big real estate developer in Israel, called, uh, I think it's uh, Chaim Katzman. And he said, look, what they're doing now in Tel Aviv is really stupid because they're tearing down build the old buildings that are two or three floors high, and they replace them by buildings that are five stories high. And this is really dumb. Why is it dumb? Because in 20 years time, they're going to raise those buildings and replace them with buildings that are nine stories high, because the population <laughs> grows <laughs> and the demand for housing is always increasing. So he says, why not build right now skyscrapers in Tel Aviv, 20 stories high and 40 stories high? And if I, you I, read, that, I read it's economical. I, I've read not about Israel, but in general, because I asked about this years ago to an economist. To build it, he said, it is, put the price of land aside for a minute. He said, it is more economical in many instances to build two 40 story towers than one 80 story tower. Now, I don't know at what point it becomes, right? And so I don't know what truth there is to that. Let's, so, let's compromise on four. On, on four right, let's at least okay. Come on. Right. I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in Tel Aviv, in Dizikov Center, the most desired piece of land in the state of Israel, uh, there were, up until a few years ago, you had the Tel Aviv cinema. You are, you're fairly a new immigrant, you don't know Tel Aviv uh, cinema, nine years, but it but was, yeah, yeah okay. okay it, it, it's an old cinema, it used to be pretty popular, and then it was basically became a failure and it was basically uninhabited for many years. And now it was raised and they built a new building instead of the old Tel Aviv cinema. 
So how many stories do you think they built instead of the Tel Aviv cinema in the most desired piece of land in the state of Israel? Four stories or five stories, was it, right? Was it residential? And they did it. Commercial? Yeah, yeah, residential, residential. Wait, was, residential. was it the person that owned? I mean, the person that owned it would easily be able to get funding for 40, 60 right. stories, right? right? But, but now, why did they do that? As far as I know, because they want to maintain the skyline of Tel Aviv. They want to maintain the character of the city. They want to maintain the old Bauhaus style of some of the new and nice houses, uh, some of the old houses in Tel Aviv. They want to maintain it. And that's fine. I guess uh, it's, uh, it's a legitimate desire, but you need to consider what is the implication. The implication right. is that Tel Aviv is basically a, a place reserved for the for the wealthy, top wealthy, for the, wealthy. yeah yeah the wealthy the you think top that's uh, 100 100 percent i think a class thing going so, on here because i i've been i feel that a li like a little bit in conversations with certain people that would that seems to defend let's say the status quo or the media is that like they made it or their family were wealthy or they immigrated long enough and bought land and now it's worth millions of dollars right that was cost nothing decades ago and and they they know their set and their family set and so what do they care and i have a bigger fear also is that i'm finding that and this really scares me the most is that as there are more and more homeowners there's now a class of people that are worried about their property value dropping and they see it as part of their nest egg that their home is going to be worth less so they won't be able to sell it and let's say downgrade and they'd have a whole bunch of freaking money that they can use and they use that as a big part of the retirement equation also. So I'm worried so, that there's so many interests that's really screwing over the younger generation and they're leaving. Sure. So I guess there's a mixture of considerations here. There's just like with the farmers that we mentioned half an hour ago about how them some just pretend to be Zionists and whatever. So also in this case, I guess some people pretend to be concerned about the skyline and the old character of the city and they want to look progressive and advanced and sophisticated. And it's very possible that most of them simply own houses in Israel and they say just, you know, screw everyone else, we just want to maintain our own wealth. However, I do want to address the second point that you made, which is that for homeowners, not investors, the people that actually own houses and live in those houses. Owner occupied. The, uh, if, if, if the price of real estate in Israel comes down, that's actually in their interest. It's in their interest because firstly, they have kids and they want their kids to be able to afford houses when they, you know, grow up and leave the, you know, leave the nest. And, and ideally, secondly, by the way, I want to add to that. I want to, I want to add to that is that also is that people want, and as a parent, and I have a 10 year old, is that, and you know, and I'm thinking, you know, she, she might, you know, she, she might be married and might make me a grandparent faster than I know. And I would, I, in a perfect world, it would be nice if she lived next to me, right? Sorry for my parents that I left in America. But if prices are low, therefore, it drops significantly. That means they can afford a place near you, let alone ever anywhere. But they don't have to move to the most rural parts of Israel, where it's still too expensive, in order they can actually live in the neighborhood that they grew up in with the near their friends that they might be, you know, maybe in the synagogue or the community nearby, and most importantly, ha raise their children near their grandparents. So one of the happy outcomes of prices dropping is that you have more options and people can afford more stuff. But just to finish my point, not only is that it's the interest of homeowners for prices to fall because they want their kids to be able to afford their own houses, but also, don't forget that many people that own houses and live in those houses, their biggest dream is to sell the house and buy a bigger, better house. Now, if the prices of real estate overall in Israel falls down, then their ability to improve only increases because they need to add a smaller amount of money to buy a better place. So the only people that really suffer from the reform I'm suggesting in the real estate market in Israel are investors. And so be it, you know, it's an investment, it's not an insurance policy.